welcome to Motor One. As you may have noticed, we've got a new face on the channel. She's Victoria Scott. He's Brett Evans. And we're here with the 2024 Lexus GX500. Now, Lexus is very frank about the fact that the GX needed some updating, so we're gonna put this thing through its paces both on and off-road. Victoria, if it's okay with you, I'd like to keep my soft city hands supple and ready for the on-road, and I'll pitch it to you for the off-road. How's that, that sound? great, let's hit the dirt. All right, let's do it. <laughs> The Lexus GX's natural habitat is probably going to be on-road most of the time, at least for its first and second owners. And a lot of that time will probably be spent taking family vacations, which is why we are hanging out at Saguaro National Park for our first taste of the Lexus GX. This is their third mid-size luxury SUV. Uh, so it's kind of interesting that they're gonna be positioning this at the top of the lineup. You're making some sacrifices in terms of comfort. The third row isn't gonna be as spacious as it is in the TX but you're getting that off-road capability and that kind of like image to yeah. go along with it. Yeah, it's definitely a lot tougher looking than yeah. the TX. It's definitely a lot tougher looking than the RX. They brought the pillars way back on uh -huh. this and gave it that really two box design, yeah. kind of a throwback to 80s Land Cruisers. And you know, it's definitely got a different driving experience as a result. It's just that it's gonna be a little bit less refined. So it's gonna be a specific kind of luxury SUV buyer, I think, who wants this. That's a great segue because this does have a totally unique design, not just compared to the RX and the TX, but even to the predecessor, the, the GX 470 and 460 that came before it. Lexus was very deliberate about giving the GX better visibility and uh, kind of a, a more commanding driving position. As a result, we are sitting very upright in the car. The belt line is very, very low and you can really see a lot down next to you. And then in addition to that, the hood has this step down appearance in the middle where uh, on the outside, you, you kind of get these bulges in front of the driver and the front passenger that helps you place the wheels when you're driving off road. But then at the same time, you have this little step down in the middle that gives you good forward visibility. So you're not kind of just guessing what might be over the next crest of that trail. So. They definitely made a lot of uh, inroads in, in making this a little bit more user-friendly and a little bit more uh, rugged and off-roadable in that respect, just with the exterior design. Yeah, they also shortened the nose by a lot and gave it a lot more uh, approach angle and 23 degrees of departure, I yeah. think, which is a significant improvement over the old one. Yeah, for sure. Um, and this model that we're in right now has, we've both got heated and cooled seats. You've got your heated steering wheel on. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty comfortable and quiet right now. I think that's that's pretty good all-rounder for yeah. off-roading. I'm glad you brought that up because this is actually a very nicely graded and paved road. Uh, the road that we drove in on though was a little bit rougher and a little bit, uh, probably not in quite as good a condition. And you pointed out that it definitely had a lot more tire slap than you were expecting. Is that, is that still kind of how you feel? It definitely has the body on frame SUV, first impact, second reverberation right. sort of body feel. I also felt that the uh, drivetrain transmitted a little bit more vibration than I would have expected from something that was so luxurious. It definitely feels a little bit more agricultural, almost, when you're on the throttle really hard. It transmits it through the steering wheel a lot. Yeah, that's interesting that you, you mentioned that and I was going to check it out and I'm, I'm feeling it now. I'm not even really pressing the throttle down super hard and I still definitely am getting kind of just, it's not like vibrating, it's not like shaking the thing apart, but you can definitely feel a little bit of buzzing coming through the steering wheel rim. Let's talk about some of the specifics of the Lexus GX. It no longer has a V8 for the first time in the nameplate's history. It now has a twin turbocharged 3.4 liter V6 that makes 349 horsepower and 479 pound feet of torque. <laughs> and it results in an over 9,000 pound towing capacity for the highest equipped models. That's also kind of staggering is that this has a higher towing capacity than I think the Toyota Sequoia or the Lexus LX. Like this is a very robust and rugged platform evidently. So beyond the some of those secondary motions and some of those vibrations, I do kind of think this is a pretty nice interior all you know all things considered i was surprised though that uh this particular model this is the premium plus like you said and lexus says this is probably going to be the volume model of the gx lineup the interior is not terribly ornate not you know it's it's put together well and the materials are pretty nice but there's not a lot of bright work there's not a lot of wood trim it's kind of simple and, and a little bit restrained i think that it's going to appeal to people who are specifically shopping for something that feels a bit more rugged. I think that if you want something that's a bit more ornate and a bit more traditional luxury, 
Lexus already offers those two other SUVs. And this is going to be somebody who wants a really well-built SUV with a decent amount of power, yeah. but they want that kind of old-school rugged feeling. And I think that's reflected in the design of the vehicle as well, inside and out. Speaking of interior design, one of the things that Lexus told us when we were, we were talking about the car before we got in it is that this is their first, um, I think in history, their first like truly horizontal dashboard. It's the first time that this, this dual screen layout has been displayed very flat. It's not angled toward the driver at all. The whole point behind this very rectilinear layout inside the car is that when you're going over rocks or when you're kind of like traversing a side slope, these angles help you kind of maintain a sense of horizontal and help you help you understand the attitude of the vehicle compared to its surroundings. And in that regard, they're making sure that those owners who take it off road will have a good sense of straight ahead and a good sense of shining side up, which is kind of a clever attention to detail. It's got that Lexus attention to detail in off-road ability yeah. and, and uh, ergonomics for wheel placement and for sight lines for rock crawling. And like, that is very cool to see for somebody who has always been interested in this platform primarily as an off-roader. Yeah, for sure. That's honestly a really great point. And I think the next thing that we need to do is go get some mud on these tires. So. I agree. As promised, I'm back behind the wheel of the GX and we are headed deep into the desert outside of Tucson to go test the off-road capabilities of this thing. Yeah. Because this is the Overtrail Plus edition. Uh, we were in the Premium Plus earlier, that mm -hmm. was the volume model. This is the hardcore off-roader spec. We've got 33-inch all-terrain tires, we've got both center and a rear locker, we got multi-terrain, the multi-terrain system for uh, different kinds of surfaces. Right now we're just on dirt, but hopefully we'll get to try out some mud in a bit. And uh, yeah, we're gonna see like what this thing can actually do. Something kind of interesting, as you mentioned before, the Premium Plus is gonna be the volume model, but Lexus also said that Overtrail and Overtrail Plus are gonna represent 30% of the split in that first model year. So they're clearly like planning on a lot of off-roaders and overlanders getting into this, into yeah. the GX. Yeah, absolutely. This is kind of a gift to the overlanding community, which has loved the GX platform for quite a while. So we're almost at nine inches of ground clearance. And then of course, like the rear locker. Uh, center locker, and then the multi-terrain select, which is exclusive to this, as is the EKDSS, which is the electronic kinetic dynamic suspension system, which uh, allows the sway bars to basically unlink electronically. So far, it definitely has the same kind of off-road. We're not going very fast, but it still has the same kind of off-road shops, clearly, as the outgoing GX does. Nobody's going to be upset at Lexus for for making the, the new GX2 plush. And it is still quite comfortable off-road. I will say that's kind of nice here. Uh, there's some that I think, are, some off-roaders that kind of focus a little bit heavily on on-road performance and then you go over bumps on the dirt and it just feels yeah. terrible. And this is still like pretty placid, I would say. So I had a specific question from a friend about throttle tip-in and the tuning of the turbo engine with the 10-speed transmission and low range. I think that the throttle is very easy to modulate here. Um, this also has crawl control. So when we're going uphill, it will help modulate the throttle for me. Um, so I stay at a, a constant speed mm -hmm. and it's also got hill descent control. So even in four high, that works where it'll help you hold a specific speed as you go downhill and modulate the brakes so you don't get a lot of wheel spin or slide. This still feels like it's got the on-road mannerisms that it had earlier uh -huh. um, in terms of acceleration and just sort of like, there's power there for sure, like if I want to tip into it, but it's very easy to modulate and keep this thing feeling smooth. The other thing I'm noticing as I drive this is it's really not that overwhelmingly wide. You know, I've reviewed the Lexus LX, which is the, the larger body on frame uh -huh. uh, SUV they offer, which is also very off-road oriented and it's, it's excellent off-road, but it does feel really bulky. Yeah. And this feels, I'm not sure, I, and de definitely is a little bit narrower, but it feels much narrower. Yeah. It feels so much easier to know exactly where my wheels are yeah. at and, and place things carefully and make tight turns. And you know, I'm, I'm not pinstriping the thing and there's cacti everywhere. everywhere. Yeah. As part of this more aggressive design language, Lexus really like, they, they pulled back the windscreen. They drew up those A pillars really sharp and it really does help with visibility a lot. My last thought before I let you before I let you bring us home is that, you know, everything about this car, I've mentioned it a couple times before and it's been on the Motor One website once or twice. I have a 96 Lexus LX450, which is the 80 series Land Cruiser. And um, everything about it, like the depth of the dashboard, the, the relationship between the low belt line and the windshield, everything about it really feels very much like that vehicle to me. And, and like, you know, like you said, it's that right, that perfect amount of width to give you enough space in the cabin and not feel super cramped like you might in a Jeep, 
without sacrificing maneuverability. So that's my last thought, is that they've built a brand new 80 series Land Cruiser, and I'm here for that. I can tell you for sure that this thing is phenomenally capable off-road. It's super easy to see out of. It makes a really difficult trail into nothing. We'll leave it at that. I'm gonna get behind the wheel. I wanna take this thing off-road and learn how to use it properly, and uh, we'll catch up with everyone back at the ranch. Well, that was a lot of fun. Yeah, sure I was. really loved getting to wheel this thing off-road. Yeah. It was a blast. But after getting some on-road and off-road time in it, who do you think the target market for the new GX is gonna be? Well, I definitely think that you're making some sacrifices with that body on frame design. Uh, it's not going to be as comfortable on road as a BMW X5 or a Mercedes Benz GLE, but at the same time, and as we saw with you behind the wheel, it is so much fun to drive off road. It just like does the thing so, so well. So, what this is aimed for is, like you said, a defender buyer, somebody who really wants that off road capability. You know, this is so upright, it's got great sight lines. It's designed around the philosophy of going off road. For sure. And for that buyer, it's going to be the perfect vehicle. 100%. And Best of all, it means that in 15 or 20 years, people like you and I are going to be able to pick one up for 20 grand and have a really good time with it, right? Uh, it's going to be the best vehicle of my 40s. And on that note, if you want to learn more about the Lexus GX, which is apparently going to be the ideal vehicle of her 40s and 150s, you can definitely check out MotorOne.com to read our full first drive review. You should also look us up on social media and keep up with us there. But until next time, thanks so much for watching.